Hello and welcome back, it's Puzzle Time with Sudoku Sleuth, and today we're going to be playing Window in Fog, or Window in the Fog, I believe is the actual full title. Now, you can spot a couple of things. One is, sadly, this is not one of James Sinclair's artisanal Sudoku series, as has become almost traditional on a Tuesday. This is one that I have pre-recorded ahead of my travels. So, uh, I am aiming to feature one of the artisanal Sudoku ones for Wednesday, but given I come back late Tuesday night, I will probably post it more like Wednesday lunchtime or something along those lines. Uh, second thing that I'm going to immediately confess to is I actually had some technical trouble in my first recording of this. Essentially, I was halfway through, needed to hit the pause button. Um, I thought it continued. It really didn't. It just had a frozen screen that was recording for the rest of this uh, with just audio only. So I am re-recording this. It does mean that I kind of know how this is going to unfold. But I am going to try my very best to faithfully reproduce some of the dead ends I actually pursued. Anyway, let's take a look at today's puzzle and rule set with absolutely the wrong window. <laughs> like, totally the wrong window. Let me see if I can uh, fix this, please. I actually don't know what's going on. Come on, one second. I mean... I don't even know if this is going to work. Is it going to work? It looks like it's working. So we're going to assume that it's going to be fine. Right. Um, Window in the Fog by Timotab. And we have the following set of rules. First off, we've got normal Sudoku rules apply. Place the digits 1 to 9 once each in every row, column and box. Dynamic fog, extra regions, thermometers, and crop key. Now, if you know what all of that means, link in the description down below for you to play. On the off chance that you don't, Sudoku, place the digits 1 to 9, once each in every row, every column, if I can even select one, of course, every 3x3 three three box, so 1 through to 9 without any repeats. Then we have dynamic fog. So the grid is partially covered in fog. When all initially unfogged cells have correct digits, the fog in the rest of the puzzle will clear, and no guessing is necessary. You can see that essentially we've got this kind of I don't know, larger box that we have here, or larger square, that is without fog, we're going to have to place every single digit in here, not just pencil marks, actual digits, so we can actually un unclear all of the remaining digits and actually figure out what we're meant to be doing here. We've got extra regions, so the four shaded 3x3 three three areas are extra regions, and digits cannot repeat within each such region. So this square, for example, that is in green, is also the digits 1 to 9 once each. So this cell and this cell, even though they're in different rows, columns, and boxes, because they're in the same extra region, cannot be the same digits, actually. If I, yeah, it will even give you an error. And there are interesting implications of this. I'll come back to that in the solve. We have thermometers and crop keys. So digits along a thermometer strictly increase from the bulb end. So if this cell is a 2, for example, this could be a 3, as long as it's bigger. It doesn't have to be in regular steps. So I've gone up by 1. I can go up by 2. The most important thing is that at no point ever am I decreasing. And it's, it says strictly increasing, so uh, this doesn't count. I actually have to go up. Then last but not least, we've got the crop keys. So where digits are separated by a white dot, they are consecutive. Where they are separated by a black dot, they are one is double the other. And not all dots are necessarily given. If this cell is a two, well, this cell has to be kind of, one of them has to be at a two to one ratio. One of them has to be double the other. So this would have to be one or four. This would have to be 1 or 3 to be consecutive. If I end up with 3 and 4 in here. Um, 3 and 4? Uh, let, me, let me reverse it. 4 and 3. So clearly in a 2 to 1 ratio, clearly consecutive, no white dot, no black dot. All of that is allowed under today's rules. No negative constraint. So, as always, to play along, link in the description down below for you to do so. And with that said, I'm going to restart the clock. I'm going to say, I know, let's see how I get on, but I absolutely know how I get on. Now, one dead end, which actually took some time to explain first time around, so I will do it, but it actually is entirely unnecessary for the solve, is you can do a bit of set theory, because essentially this is like Wendoku, sort of. Um, sort of, because it's not quite in the normal location, but you can still kind of use set theory. So... What I mean by that is, if you take these columns, so I have three columns in here. Sudoku says, this is the digits 1 to 9 once each. 
This is now two sets of the digits one to nine once each. This is three sets of the digits one to nine. So now the extra regions, however, now that I've got three sets of the digits one to nine, this is one of those sets. That's the rule. That's the extra region of the digits one to nine without any repeats. So I've removed one set. I've removed a second set. And now I am left with a third set. And essentially, this is essentially like another hidden region. And you can repeat that exact same logic for this kind of group of three, this group of three, and you can kind of go all the way around. Um, the reason I'm kind of going to do this very briefly is to show you that there's actually another region that is normally kind of not, I mean, I've often missed it in other window because then it tends to actually elongate my solves. But if you think about it, we've got one region, a second region, a third region, a fourth region, a fifth, a sixth, a seventh, and an eighth. So now I have eight of regions of the digits one to nine once each. And it means that the remaining cells that are also nine cells is another set of the digits one to nine once each. And this is essentially like a hidden ninth. Anyhow, turns out that none of this is actually useful for the solve. So don't worry about it. If it's not that particularly obvious, I'm just going to clear the screen. Um, clear it, keep the time, doesn't matter. Right, the thermometers. One, two, three, four, five, five, six, seven. This is at least a seven. If you think about the digits, the black croquet dot digits, one, two, four, and eight, three and six, essentially that's all of the digits that are allowed on a black croquet dot. Five, seven, and nine are never allowed because half of it would be a non-integer number. A double would be 10 or, or larger. That's not going to work on this type of Sudoku. Now, if this is seven, eight, or nine, the only available one that's on the black croquet dot digits is the eight. So that gives us, I don't want to call it break-in because I feel until you reveal this this dynamic fog region doesn't really feel like a break-in. So this is definitely eight, therefore this is a four. Same logic is actually also seven cells long, therefore this is at least seven, therefore this is an eight, and this is another four. Um, it removes one of the degrees of freedom, but it leaves me with one. So these, oh no, I can't do that. One, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, and that's the thermometer's pencil marked. Um, where am I going next? Right. What is actually helpful in this is to think about Sudoku in combination with the extra regions. Forget the Wenduku thing. Just look at simple items like here's four. Is it none of these cells in box five? This four, none of these cells in box five. The extra region, none of these cells in box five, there's only one place for the four, it's here. That's four, that's five, that's six. That gives me six, seven, that gives me seven over here. And this is probably where my memory is just going to immediately disappear of what else I did to kind of make this go quickly. Uh, of course, a four in this region means that's three, that's two, that's one. I don't have any info about this region. These cells are now what? Six, seven, eight, nine? Seemingly. I mean, I'm going to pencil mark it, and then clean it up. So no sevens here, no six here, no eights there. No seven here. Okay. Interesting, but... Not hugely helpful. Nine could be eight. Eight could be nine, it can't be seven. And then the six, because it can't be seven, would have to be a five. Of course, eight is not available, so that wasn't eight ever. That is not nine. So essentially, it's either going six to five or eight going to nine. And we end up with like a virtual six, nine pair. If this is six, that's five, that's nine. This is eight, that's nine, that's six, interesting. Interesting, but doesn't give me much. Where am I going next? Anything useful about the eights? Six is, yeah, six, we can do the same thing that we did with the four. Six, six, same region, six. 
So that's six. Therefore, that's three. That's not four. That's two. That three gave me four and five. So one, two, and two, three are still not resolved. No fives. Just keep doing Sudoku, Sleuth. Just, just keep doing it. And therefore, I have one, seven, eight, and nine. This is not seven or eight, so this is one or nine. In fact, this is also one or nine. And these are all options, seemingly one, seven, eight, nine, which is not great. Huh. Then, well, okay, Sudoku again, no eights, no eights. Where is the eight in this region? can only be in here. These are not eights. Where is eight in this region? That's the only place that's left now, which gives me a nine, which gives me a six, which gives me another nine. Yeah, because it's not seven, and therefore a seven in here. This is not a seven either. This is one or nine. That nine gave me a one, a two, a three. Lovely. The one nine pair is actually resolved if I paid attention. And we're very nearly revealing what comes next. Very, very nearly. Let's think about this. I mean, it is like straightforward Sudoku. I don't know why I'm making it look difficult. That's a seven. That's a one. That's a nine. Nine if I can type. Then in here, I need two, three, and five. Three is not in any of these because of this three. This is this is not the five. That's the five and grand reveal. Fantastic. Right. Now, the reason the extra regions is actually not that helpful is because you've actually got the columns completed and the rows completed. So there's actually very little value in understanding that the regions are there. What you can just literally do is pencil mark all of these and you'll find that the thermometers basically brings it home. So this is 567. These are, well, it's 1, 2, 4. It's only the 1 and 2 up here and the 4 down there for these two to be connected. 7 is too big for what we need. Essentially, if this is 7, that's 8, that's 9, which is not available. So that's not 7. 5, 6 becomes 6, 7 becomes 7, 8. It's not 7, so that's an 8. That gives me a 5, 6, 7 triple with a definite 5 in here, not a 5 there. Actually, that 7 told me that was a 6 a while ago, and therefore this is 5, and therefore this is 7, and therefore this is 6. These have to be lower than 6, except 3, 4, and 5 are not available. So this is forced with 1 and 2. This is just a written in digit of 9. Keep going in the columns for a second. So we've got 3, 8, and 9, seemingly. No resolution. Fine. These, I mean, the corner ones are more interesting because of the thermometer. So at least it limits them a bit or helps join the dots, so to speak. 5, 6, 7. That is not five or six, that is just a seven. These are not sevens, this is not a six, that's a five, that's a six. These two cells, in fact, this cell is actually interesting because it's not five or six and obviously needs to be smaller than seven. So the biggest it can be is a four. And in fact, we've got a two, four pair in here. So that is not gonna be a four. It's gonna to have to be smaller than four. And therefore this is a two, this is a three, this is a four. Then we have 589 in here. I'll pencil mark a lot, clean this one up. The three tells me that's not a three. That's an eight, nine pair. And then there's another one, two with a four. That's the four. This is the other one or two. It's not a one. That's two, one, two. Uh, I need another th three, eight, nine in here. This is not eight or nine. Actually, it doesn't matter. This is This is just one. This is just three. That is not a three. That's my second eight, nine in kind of this box. This is another eight, nine, and it's actually not resolved, but it does give me an eight, nine pair and therefore a three. It also gives me a five, eight, nine triple. So this is just, well, I have everything in that box except for four. Can I write in anything in here? No, I've got kind of these digits, the two, four and eight already in there. So all I can do is pencil mark three, five, 
7. 3 and 7 are not here, so that's the 5. Then there is a 3, 7 pair. Then on this side, I've got another 3, 7, something else. 5. Yeah, 5. Neither 5 nor 7 can be on this black crocodile, so that's definitely a 3. That's definitely a 6. 5, not 6, so this is 7, 8, and it actually stops an 8 because 9 is not available. So that's 8, that's 7. This is all forced. 1s are neither of these. That's 1, that's 2. This is something, something, 4. And this is not an 8. The 3, of course, gave me a 7, and the 3, I just... Didn't follow up on it. And then there is a one, I've got two, three, four, five. I need six, which can only be in here. I need seven, eight, and nine. Nine is helpful because it gives me eight, nine, eight, nine. And if I've not made any other mistakes, oh, hang on, five, nine, and an eight for the finish. You can see I've already hearted it. It's a fantastic puzzle from Timotab. Admittedly, I'm kind of featuring it for a Tuesday. I'm recording on Thursday, so that number is just going to keep ticking up. So I really do apologize if you end up seeing some puzzles you've already played elsewhere. Hope you guys enjoyed the puzzle and the video, and uh, I'll see you back soon tomorrow. Bye-bye for now.